Well, as Mrs. Dolan, truly Mrs. Clinton, make the ritual visit to the arena to uh, congratulate their husbands, Senator Dole's daughter Robin as well. It uh, must be clear to most people, I think, that uh, this is a format they've uh, both enjoyed, certainly one in which the president feels uh, very much at home. Uh, both done well. Certainly a very engaged audience. We talk a lot in the press about uh, cynical voters, and no question they're out there, but that was certainly anything but the tone of the uh, audience and the questions uh, in this uh, particular event. Uh, Senator Dole on occasion uh, directing zingers at the president, uh, points that he wanted to make about the character question about which so many of us in the media talk before the evening began, but the president, for the most part, ignoring them and going about his business. Lots of differences between them, as has been evident out on the campaign trail, but uh, clearly lots of opportunities here for them this evening to indicate that they agreed, they believed in bipartisanship on some issues, and they believe uh, that uh, the essence of good politics was about cooperation. And uh, as we spend the next uh, few minutes with a uh, very various colleagues uh, around the country, it'll be interesting to ask why did anyone think Bob Dole would mount a major attack on the president this evening. The question, of course, is whether or not any of this makes any difference. You saw the polls um, at the beginning of the debate tonight. Our tracking poll pretty much reflects the other ones you see around the country. The question tonight in the wake of this will be, did it change many minds? Did it make the difference that Bob Dole so clearly would like and needs it to make. Several people with uh, a lot of history here to bring to bear on this, so I'm just going to wander around a little and start uh, while we continue to watch this uh, event in San Diego break up. Uh, call in Koki Roberts first, who's in Washington, and Koki, just ask you for your first impressions. Well, my first impression is answers your question of did it do uh, something for Bob Dole that, that he needed done, and my, my guess is the answer to that question is no. Uh, we heard a lot of these, these uh, statements that we heard tonight before. I must say we heard about that bridge to the 21st century a good bit tonight uh, from the president, but Dole did get in a few little digs here and there, but uh, this was not a place to really go on some strong attack. As you said, Peter, the, the demeanor of the crowd was such that it would have been in some ways disrespectful to them to do that. George Will is with us here in Washington, uh, sorry, here in New York this evening where he's uh, been on other business. George, your first impression? Well, the president took his strategy regarding Bob Dole's attacks from the Bible. Ch Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1, a soft answer turneth away wrath. <laughs> and indeed it did, and he simply diffused it and he did it masterfully. Peter, I have to say what struck me most is I do not believe Bob Dole understands his own positions. He gave the most garbled explanation of the Piscataway affirmative action case. And when he got to affirmative action, a burning issue in California, thanks to the California Civil Rights Initiative, which is running ahead of Bob Dole, I guarantee you, in every congressional district in the state, he simply did not make the relevant distinction between affirmative action and racial preferences. And so it never has a man made less out of more ammunition. Well, California is uh, terribly important to Senator Dole at the moment, and whether or not he's making a feint in that direction this week or going to make a serious major effort there, we'll come back and talk about. But one more first impression before we take a brief break from our White House correspondent, Britt Hume, who is out on the road in San Diego tonight with the Clinton campaign. Britt? It's pretty clear, Peter, that this went just about the way the White House and the President had hoped it would. Uh, he was uh, subject to relentless uh, attack in the debate preparations from George Mitchell, the former senator, playing the role of Bob Dole, and was coached all the way not to respond to any of it, and indeed tonight he did not. And the White House has bet on this format. Part of the big uh, negotiating point the Clinton uh, administration made in the beginning was to have this be the format for the second debate. And the result was that they got the kind of audience they expected and the kind of questions from that audience that they expected. And they did not include any of the questions along the lines of the Dole attacks. And the president felt he had no need to reply and did not. We're going to go on. Thanks, but we're going to go on with this in a while. Um, both you and Koki taking note of this audience, uh, reminding me that very often in these town meetings, we find people asking questions on a much broader range of subjects than we in the press do. And sometimes it's even embarrassing 
uh, to some members of the press to hear how much more engaged on a broad range of subjects the public or this particular group of citizens is uh, than the press sometimes is, which can be relentless on a given subject. As for, uh, as for the debates, this was the last one, as Jim Lehrer reminded us, though Senator Dole fished a few times there. The Clinton campaign has made it very clear from the very beginning they were not going to have any debates after October the 16th. Former President Ford there in the cheering section for Senator Dole will be back in just a moment. ABC News live coverage of the second presidential debate will continue after this from our ABC stations. ABC News live coverage of the 96 vote. The second presidential debate continues. Once again, Peter Jennings. Welcome back to our coverage of the debate. We've uh, several more people. We want to get first impressions for them. Let's go to San Diego again where Sam Donaldson is standing by. Sam, you're inside first impressions. Well, Peter, Senator Dole came out and he jabbed a little bit like a fighter does. He said ethical standards in the White House. He said scandals in the White House. He said, I challenge the president to say he will not pardon anyone with whom he's had business. But he didn't press his attack. And after that, I have to disagree with my friend George Will, as I frequently do. I thought there was very intelligent, intelligible, and right on the money discussion between the two candidates. But at the end of the evening, if Senator Dole hadn't made some huge headway, and I don't think he did, we're right back where we were. And I guess, Peter, our tracking poll tomorrow will say what he said yesterday, about 15 points. Okay, Sam, thanks very much. Uh, Jeff Greenfield is also with us in California tonight. Uh, Jeff, there were several references there to television. We're talking uh, uh, to an audience of some size. We're not sure how large tonight. How does this play for the television audience from your point of view? I actually thought this was a fine performance for Senator Dole for an unusual reason. You know, people said this is Clinton's format. He loves the town hall. It looked to me like Senator Dole felt almost as if he were back in the well of the Senate with those desks, talking to colleagues, moving around. People have described Dole as too kind of old-fashioned to, to accept this kind of format. I thought he was very effective. I thought frequently he turned to President Clinton, turned the president's attacks. Whether this